Psalm 139 from your authorized version of the scriptures. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and follow me along with what we will be reading and looking at today, okay? Follow me along. Just don't sit there on your duff. Get the scriptures. Go to where we are going today, okay? Let's begin this with Psalm 139, verses 19 on to verse 24. Psalm 139, verses 19, on to verse 24. Surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men. For they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee. And am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? See, brethren, one of the things that these satanic ecumenical love gospel heretics want to instill in you is that we are not to count people our enemies who hate our Lord. Hence, perfect hatred is what? Being enemies of those who are enemies of our Lord. Now, we've, we've talked about this before. Personally, I don't want to see these devils go to hell. But they're going to go to hell, and our God is just and righteous, fair and equal. Praise the Lord for his righteous judgment upon those who hate him. Okay? They are our enemies. Okay, they are our enemies. And the scripture tells us, Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee. We are to hate them with perfect hatred. They are the enemies of our Lord. They are our enemies. This is excluding those who are ignorant, not knowing better, who don't know, okay, who have not heard the true gospel. This is in specific regard to those who know, but have chosen to follow Satan the Vatican, the Jesuit order, and the teachings that come from the uh, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, and try to veil it, cover it in a veil to make it look like you're a Christian. Okay, Those are our enemies. Those are our enemies. They have made their choice, and they have sold themselves to do wickedly in the eyes of the Lord, to do evil in the eyes of the Lord, okay? Those are our enemies, okay? I don't want to see my enemies go to hell because you're going to burn for eternity and there's going to be no escape. But see, our God is just, righteous, fair, and equal. And if you go to hell, you deserve to be there. You've earned it. Yeah. And no pity for you. No pity for you. Because you've had every opportunity that everyone else has had, but you've decided to follow after Satan. Okay? Yes, personally, I don't want to see anyone go to hell. But see, God is just. God is just. And we have to praise the Lord for his righteous judgment. And those who hate him, God hates. Okay? Um, many have uh, given you that truth before. I'm not going to get into it in this video, but we wanted to preface it with this. Let's read verse 21 again. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee, and am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart, Try me and know my thoughts. Self-examination. Self-examination through the scriptures. And see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. See, this shows us that there are blind spots. <laughs> Not that. There are blind spots that you and I have as the church of the living God. There are things that I don't see that, for example, my wife will see. Okay, why? Because of skin suit pride, 
that kind of stuff. Ignorance, willful ignorance, okay? It's like, I, I didn't know I was doing, you know? See, self-examination. Constantly, constantly examining yourself in light of Scripture for us today in this dispensation, mainly in the Pauline epistles, the doctrine that we are to adhere to, of course, for today. That doesn't mean that we exclude the entirety of Scripture. No, not at all. Not at all. Okay? But we started this, we started here because of perfect hatred. I personally have no problem with anyone who is saved, born again, converted of the Church of the Living God. Those who are enemies of my Lord, these infiltrators, these coadjutors, these Jesuits, they hate my God, my Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, they are my enemy. You see how that works? Okay? They are our enemies. And we are to treat them as our enemies because they have made their choice. Excluding those who are ignorant and do not know better. See, a man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition, reject. Why? Because he's subverted in himself. Okay? And sinneth. All right? Once you've given truth to someone and they reject it, and they are aware of it and can and willingly choose to go after Satan. There are enemies. No pity. No pity. No beast so fierce but hath some touch of pity. I have none. Therefore am no beast. That's from Shakespeare, by the way. Okay? There's a lot of stuff going on today. This very day, the 9th of December. But right now at this time, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, I was recently sent a thing from a beloved brother, a dear friend, um, <laughs> that apparently in the United at the United Nations they put out this jaguar eagle thing for protection. Uh huh. More on the United Nations, Lord willing, in another video sometime in the near future. That that's a whole different kind of thing. Also, <laughs> what's going on in Israel? Right now, oh wow, oh wow. People are looking for a savior. Can I tell you about Jesus Christ, our Lord God, our Father? Can I tell you the, about the Lord Jesus Christ through the authorized version of scripture? No, I don't wanna hear it. What do they wanna hear? God loves you, God's not mad at you. Just believe. They want that Jesus who is that man of sin, the son of perdition, okay? They don't want God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, of the authorized version of the scriptures. That's, they don't want him. They want that man of sin, the son of perdition, okay? Yo, we also have division within the church of the living God. Of what? Traditions of men, purposely stirred from pride and the skin suit, flesh, okay? So all these things are going on right now, okay? And also, oh, let's not forget, we have the Transformer variant, Omicron, of the psychological operation known as the Poison Crown, all instituted by the Jesuit order. We got all this stuff going on. All this stuff going on. And there are these young babes out there right now who are getting led astray by chicken dung, cowardly people who are, whose sole purpose there is to make these babes err in the faith and to be there to cause division and strife and do all kinds of things. They are chicken dung, Cowardly little boys. Chicken dung. Cowardly little boy. Coward. True cowardly. Truly a coward. And these types of people, those types of people, are trying to worm in and trying to divert as many people as they can from the faith. And to have them shipwreck in their faith 
by their nonsense. With all that's going on right now, see, diversion, diversion, diversion. That's what these devils are all about, to divert you from the truth. And it blows my mind that people, and unfortunately this is the fact, and it seems to be with a lot of the babes, that to this day there are still those who are being duped, thinking that because someone can say, utter, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. That proves that they are saved. For you babes, I don't blame you. I blame these people who we are to hate with perfect hatred. Our enemies. I blame them. But if you as a babe don't want to search the scriptures yourself to see whether these things are so, and remember, they can't keep it up forever. Sooner or later, boom, they're going to shoot themselves in the foot. Happens every time. And some of them already have. But see, they're chicken dung cowardly little boys who are scared, who don't want certain things about them being known. Why? Yeah, why? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, we make mistakes too, remember, brethren. Over a year ago, uh, over a year ago, I think it was in May, the Lord gave me to do a video on 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. Other people had done videos on that as well, but the Lord had me to do that one, and I'm going to, I wrote it down even, going to link it in this video. Um, there was a time where I taught, I taught it, that someone, if they could utter with their mouth, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, Jesus is the Lord, that that would prove that they are saved. I was, whoa, 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 I was wrong about that, wasn't I? Yes, I was. I was very wrong and in great error over that. I publicly repented of that and made a video, number one, Publicly confessing and repenting and asking forgiveness of my sin, my error, okay? And also, the Lord led me to do a video on that topic. Very in-depth uh, video on that topic. Proving that if someone can utter that, doesn't mean that they're saved. The context is of those who are prophesying, preaching, teaching the word. Like I said, I will leave the uh, the uh, video in the description box. And hey, you chicken dung cowardly little boy, you've never disproved that at all in scripture because you're scripturally inept. Okay? You're inept. You are scripturally inept. You can't. Okay? You've never disproved that. And you can't because you're not able to. Because you're not saved. Okay? Hmm, I wonder who I'm talking about. Hmm. But anyway, with all this stuff going on, for you babes out there that are getting led astray by a chicken dung cowardly little boy who's in a grown man's body, um, this one is for the likes of you, you babes out there who get led astray by people who can just say something but it, does, it just comes from their mouth. It doesn't come from their heart. Okay? So we're going to address this today. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, like I said, and go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We are going to have some expository here on this chapter. Not the whole chapter. We're going to kind of glean through the chapter, but we're basically going to be concentrating primarily, primarily, we are going to be concentrating on verses 1 on to verse 11. But we're also going to be um, reading some other verses within this uh, chapter, okay? But, like I said, with all this stuff getting going on right now, it's very easy for these devils to come in, especially when there's been 
division purposely and uh, put in by people who are stuck up and proud. And, and why? And during this month, with all this stuff going on, so, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to be, like I said, pretty much uh, concentrating on verses 1 through 11. I'm going to read some other things, but we're basically going to, we're basically going to be focusing in on one verse. And you will see as we go. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. Now concerning... Lowercase s, spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Spiritual gifts, lowercase s. I know Mr. Daniels made, made a big to-do that um, capitalization is not important. I, I beg to differ. See, a lowercase s, spiritual gifts, are ones that are imparted on to whomever from whomever. And remember, God is a spirit. So there must be another spirit out there trying to counterfeit God that is a spirit. Oh, you don't say, huh? Go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter, oh, notes are over here, excuse me. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Okay. Spiritual gifts. Who has spiritual gifts? Okay. Let me get there. Okay. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Who has spiritual gifts? Number one, who wrote this epistle? Paul the Apostle. Paul the Apostle is of the Church of the Living God, the greatest of the Church of the Living God. Okay. Number two, it is written on to the church, the body in Corinth which had a lot of problems, okay? Note, brethren, okay? So, now concerning spiritual gifts, spiritual gifts, those of the church of the living God who come to him on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, call upon the name of the Lord, and he save you, okay? And he make you a new creature. You are given spiritual gifts or spiritual a spiritual gift, whatever that may be. And there's a purpose that you as the church of the living God are given a spiritual gift. Okay, so in context right away, number one, Paul is writing this epistle. Number two, he is writing to this epistle onto those of the church of the living God in Corinth. Okay, so we know that someone who is saved, born again, converted, wrote the epistle, obviously, okay, through God. God used Paul, the apostle, okay, Paul the Apostle was the instrument that our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Lord is that Spirit, you know, the Holy Ghost, wrote this epistle, the scriptures, okay? Okay, you, you with me? So Paul was used of God to write this epistle unto brethren, those who are saved, okay? Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ephesians chapter 4, spiritual gifts. What are the purpose of spiritual gifts? So you can puff yourself up to make yourself look good? No, 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 no. See, what's given is meant to give away. Work out, okay? Ephesians chapter 4, verses 7 on to verse 16. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Now hold on. The gift of Christ. You come to the Lord on his terms and he save you. Christ liveth in you. Christ lives in you. You are sealed until unto the day of redemption. Okay? You have God the Father who is our Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost. The Lord is that spirit. You have God living within you. So, but unto every one of us is given grace grace, unmerited favor. Do you realize you're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, a new creature in Christ Jesus? You have God living within you? Is that not a grace? But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. 
Salvation is a gift, not by works. Talks about Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 on to verse 10. For by grace are ye saved through belief. Ah, no, through faith. Okay? You can believe a lot of things. There's a difference between belief and faith, you know. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works. Works being talked about are the works of the law. Lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, the gift of Christ, unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Not these good works are not to save ourselves, we're already saved. But to share, to give unto others. Okay, now go back to Ephesians chapter 4. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. And before you were saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, who held you captive? Satan. You were taken by him at his will. You were held under him uh, because he's the little G God of this world. You were held captive. Okay, but see, wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Okay, now check this out. And he gave some apostles, like the 12 apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, and some prophets. Today, one is a prophet speaking through the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit, God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, speaking to you through the Spirit of God from the Scriptures. That is prophesying today because we have the completed canon of Scripture. There is no new revelation outside of Scripture. Okay? So, someone who has been put into the position to teach the Word of God are prophesying. Okay? If they are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. We'll get into that, okay? But, and he gave some apostles, sent ones, apostolos, sent one, okay? And some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers. Now, in every incident in that, uh, right there, what we saw, apostles, pa uh, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, that all has to do with those who will speak from the Word of God. What about an evangelist? You say, okay, you're handing out gospel tracts. Someone comes up to you. Say, oh, boy, Lord, they're coming up. Help me, Lord. Help me. Give me words to say. You have a sword on you. You know the scriptures. Away you go. Okay. Prophets. Today in this dispensation. Again, someone is prophesying unto you. Through the Spirit of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Holy Ghost, okay? Spirit, soul, and body, one God, okay? Prophesying, speaking the Word of God unto you. That is prophesying today in this dispensation, okay? Pastors and teachers, self-explanatory, okay? These all have to do with what? Speaking the Word of God. Giving the Word of God, okay? Let's continue. Now, why are we giving... Uh, now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Why are we given spiritual gifts? Verse 12 in Ephesians chapter 4. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, we're all in the ministry of reconciliation. We all have the word of reconciliation. Okay? You're an ambassador for Jesus Christ. Okay. Some have been called to full-time ministry. They do this because this is what the Lord would have them to do. You eat, sleep, drink, think, 
do whatever, word of God all the time, okay? There's really no time off. But uh, we're all in the ministry of reconciliation, okay? Because remember, he has put different callings upon different people, but we all have the ministry of reconciliation, okay? Keep that in mind, okay? So all come, oh wait, verse 12, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. That's why we are given spiritual gifts, for the edifying of the body of Christ. You're given a gift not to hoard to yourself, but to share with others. And however the Lord would have you to share that gift he has given you, okay? Whether it's doing this, whether it's an evangelist, whether it's being a pastor, being a teacher, okay? Whatever it is. And we're going to look at other diversities of gifts and things that are done for the edifying of the body of Christ, okay? So we all come in the unity of the faith, not this unity over the traditions of men, okay? And of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, which does not mean sinless, perfect here, okay? Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. See, stature of the fullness of Christ. See, you and I today, and this, we, we can't, <laughs> there is no such thing as sinless perfection, okay? We're going to sin. Again, Christ, God, never sinned. It's impossible. God cannot sin. Flesh can sin. But God within flesh could not sin. No way. It's impossible. Okay? Let's continue. Now, right here for you babes. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight, slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, like chicken dung cowardly little boys in grown men's bodies. Cowardly chicken dung little boys, okay, who lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, and this isn't a sappy bear hug, a saccharine sugary sweet, no, love of concern. Hey, wake up. That kind of love. If, if I didn't love you, I wouldn't be saying anything. I'd let you go on your way. Okay? But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Okay? So this is why we have spiritual gifts. But I want to, want to show you something else here. Go to Proverbs chapter 60. Psalms don't have chapters. Psalm 68. See? Caught myself. Ow. <laughs> Psalm 68. Come on, fingers. Work with me, not against me. Psalm 68. If you're there, praise the Lord. <laughs> Wait for me to get there. Psalm 68, verses 18 on to verse 21. Now, you, we noticed how Paul quoted Psalm 68, verses 18 on to verse 21. Thou hast, uh, Psalm 68, verses 18 on to verse 21. Thou hast ascended on high, thou hast led captivity captive. Thou hast received gifts for men. Okay? But look at this. Yea, for the rebellious also that the Lord God might dwell among them. Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth, loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation, Shelah. He that is our God is the God of salvation. 
and unto God the Lord belong the issues from death. But God shall wound the head of his enemies, and of the hairy scalp of such an one as goeth on still in his trespasses. We also got to remember, this is a different dispensation, okay? Eternal security was not in this dispensation. The Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God could come and go, come and go. There was no eternal security there. But you got to remember, you got to remember that our God is the God of salvation. And God is a spirit. Meaning there's another spirit out there, that spirit of Antichrist, that could give those who follow him by that spirit of Antichrist to do things also. That's when 1 John chapter 2 comes into play. 1 John chapter 2 comes into play. 1 John chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 25. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, and now are there many Antichrists, ah, there are, whereby we know that it is the last time. There are many antichrists today. Oh, oh boy, there's a whole lot of them. They're, they're just coming out of the woodwork. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. This is the falling away talking about uh, that Paul talked about in uh, Second Thessalonians. That this is the falling away. Okay. Yes, it can also incorporate those of the Church of the Living God getting in error. But come on, people. As we have seen, many people that we thought were saved and brethren are just falling away like flies, aren't they? Why is that? They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. That seal, that circumcision made without hands. You have God within you. Okay? That's what's being referred to. But ye have an unction from the Holy One. You know, you're sealed with the Holy Ghost. Okay, and the Lord is that spirit. Okay. The Lord is that spirit. Hmm, that's going to come into play when we look at verse 3. Okay. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Why? Because the Lord who is in you, he knows everything. We don't know everything. Bro, absolutely not. But he does. And if he chooses, he can let you know things. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Hmm. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. Because Jesus Christ is the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. We're going to get back to this a little bit once we get to verse 3, okay? But see, a lot of people who we thought were, a lot of people I thought were saved, um, turned out, well, guess what? They weren't, okay? And it's one thing to disagree. It's another thing to totally turn what you were once believing and preaching and go in an opposite direction without even claiming error, without even justifying trying to uh, where you were wrong. But no, just 
doing this and then all of a sudden psh, go off in another direction. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, no. Okay. But let's continue now in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb, not being able to speak, idols, even as ye were led. That ye were Gentiles, not of the Jews, not of the Hebrew, not of that chosen line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Okay? This, this one here is a very, very, uh, very simple to get. Galatians chapter 3. Verses 20 on to verse 29. Galatians chapter 3, verses 20 on to verse 29. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Not three persons, a person is a spirit, soul, and body. Not three persons that make one God. <laughs> That's insanity. That's madness. That's Catholic. That's satanic. Okay? Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. So, wait, 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 wait. So there was no faith in the Old Testament? No, no, there was faith in the Old Testament. Remember, it was faith in works. What were they having faith in? They went from faith to faith. Faith in what God will do. Kind of, you know, I'll bring you into this promised land. Your descendants will be like, okay? That kind of thing. In the Old Testament, they had to have faith in what God will do. That he will honor their sacrifice. That he will do. Today in this dispensation, as pertaining to salvation, we have confidence, faith on what God has done. That Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And that he shed his blood on the cross to cleanse us of all sin. Okay? See, that's the difference. Faith to faith. Okay? And in the Old Testament, under law, they were having faith in what God would do. Today, in this dispensation, we have faith on what he has done. Okay, that's what that's talking about. Because, of course, there was faith in the Old Testament, but it was on what was going to be done, not what has been done. Do you get it? Okay, let's continue. Because, see, but before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterward be revealed. Okay? Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Because, see, by the works of the law was justification in the Old Testament. And you had to have faith on the Lord that he would uh, honor those things that you would offer under the law. Okay? That, that's why there were uh, moments in Scripture where, um, like King Ahab, he would humble himself. And do things uh, right according to the law. But he didn't have faith on the Lord. And that he would honor that. He didn't have... Because remember, in the Old Testament, it was faith and works. Okay? Totally different dispensation. Okay? But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God... By faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, identified with Christ, into Christ, have put on Christ. How do you put on Christ? See, Catholics will say, well, no, that's water uh, baptism. No, uh, when Christ is in you, he will make you a new creature. Okay? Paul talks about putting on the new man. Okay? Walking according to the scriptures. Living as our Lord would have you to live while he dwells within you. Okay? For there is neither Jew nor Greek. 
There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So, but wait a minute, then, but then how come there are white men? How come there are black men? How come there, what, what was it that say? Neither bond nor free, male or female. Well, today, Satan with the transgender, say, devilishness of uh, men. Never mind, you get the point, okay? What is this talk, what is verse 28 talking about? Salvifically, as pertaining to salvation. You come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, which is godly sorrow, and in fear of the Lord, call upon his name and he save you. It doesn't matter if you're chartreuse, pink, yellow, purple, white, black, orange, yellow, red, brown, demokami, republican, okay? It doesn't matter. In Christ, salvifically, in it, pertaining to salvation, we are all one. Because we have the same Father. Culturally. Culturally. That's a different thing. This is talking about salvation. Not culturally. Not carnally. Okay? Because carnally, I am a male Caucasian who is over 60% Spanish. Okay? That's carnally, fleshly. Okay, salvifically, salvifically, there is no difference. Okay, don't forget that. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Verse 29, Abraham's seed. Um, my best friend, our best friend, our brother, we went off in a delicious direction about Abraham's seed. Not going to get into this. This may, Lord willing, be a topic for another video in the near future. Uh, we're not going to get into uh, what is Abraham's seed in this video, okay? But, Lord willing, there might be one coming, okay? But again, the point is that we're looking at is salvifically. That's why when he says, ye know that ye were Gentiles. Ye were Gentiles, but yet they're not Jews meaning of uh, descended of the line of the Hebrew, which is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, dumb, not speaking, even as ye were led, that ye were Gentiles. See, that's talking about salvation, okay? Salvifically, not carnally, not culturally, Okay? That's why we looked at Galatians here. And, and go now to Colossians. Colossians chapter 3. Not Philippians, you twit. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 11. Okay? Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 11. If ye then be risen with Christ, if you're saved, Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. I could make a tie in there about this pagan holiday, holiday but sh I won't. I won't. That needs to go away. For ye are dead to this, to this, the world. And your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, and these are all forms of idolatry because they have you, the skin suit, at its center. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, concupiscence covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Children of disobedience. You hear the gospel one time and reject it, you're a child of wrath. You're uh, children of disobedience. In the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them, but now ye also put off all these, 
anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy. Blasphemy saying that flesh is God. Okay? Filthy communication out of your mouth. Like dropping F-bombs in emails. Still got those, by the way. <laughs> hey, you chicken dung coward. Let not one lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Put off the old man. You know, put on Christ. Put off the old man, new creature, okay? And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither, okay, this again talking about salvation, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all of those who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. So when he says, ye know that ye were Gentiles, he's talking about, okay, well, carnally Gentiles, Salvifically. That's come on, come on. Do you do we get this right? Okay. Now, the big one. Verse four. Now we're going to dissect this verse quite meticulously. Okay. Wherefore, I give you to understand. Context here of understand is what? Understanding, as far as knowing in the mind, that kind of thing. Understanding. Understanding. Fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Okay? And if someone is of the church of the living God, that departing from evil is there. Ought to be there. Okay? So, but in context, remember that. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man... Keyword, speaking, speaking by the Spirit of God, calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Hmm. So, if someone can utter, now here's the thing, if someone can utter Jesus Christ, is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. That proves they're saved, right? Right? Or they're saved because they're believing the gospel, right? And give me a break, you twits. No. Uh, there is a chicken dung, cowardly little boy um, who can readily, easily say that. And many, many know that as lost as the day is long, and also, I have to mention this. There is a, a tragic young man. A tragic young man whose father, who was lost, uttered, Jesus is the Lord. And that tragic young man, his, uh, his father is lost. Openly, you know, it's like, my, my father is lost. And he said that. And unfortunately... You can see that video done by that tragic young man um, when he said that, that, that look of horror on his face. Uh, that, that, I, I've seen that uh, a couple of times, and I have not seen it since, and I won't, because that's gut-wrenching. That's gut-wrenching to see. But uh, nonetheless, lost people could say that. So does that mean that they're saved? No. Then, then what's going on here? Glad you asked. The word here that we need to focus on is speaking by the Spirit of God. Speaking. Now, those who are saved, born again, converted, they're going to speak by the Spirit of God in this dispensation, aren't they? Because we know that Balaam, in the Old Testament, he spake by the Spirit of God, didn't he? Yes, he did. But see, this dispensation where God living within those who are saved permanently, sealed until the day of redemption, okay? 
So speaking, speaking, Matthew chapter, big part, Matthew chapter 10, Matthew chapter 10, Matthew chapter 10, verses 19 on to verse 20. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. Now this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? This is doctrinally still in the Old Testament. But let's read this. Okay? For it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. Hmm. Spirit of your Father. So it will be given to you by the Spirit of your Father. Okay? Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. That's the other word that we're going to uh, focus on. Accursed. Okay? But for now, now go to Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. Pick your pardon, brethren. Sorry about that, brethren. Mark chapter 13. We want verses 9 on to verse 11. Again, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection, okay? Doctrinally, the Old Testament. But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to the councils, and in the synagogues, and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations, but when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but by the Holy Ghost. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Now, backtrack to Mark chapter 9, verses 38 on to verse 40. Mark chapter 9, verses 38 on to verse 40. And John answered him, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followeth not us, and we forbade him, because he followeth not us. But Jesus said, Forbid him not. Now, look at this. For there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me, clause there is miracle. Do a miracle in my name and speak even lightly of me. As is we're seeing here, the clause is calleth Jesus accursed. We'll, we'll get into that, okay? But again, wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God, speaking by the Spirit of God, oh, like prophesying, speaking through the Scripture, speaking to you the Word of God, the Scripture, being an evangelist, a pastor, a teacher. Hmm. Hmm. So speaking, speaking by the Spirit of God might have to do with those who are speaking through the Holy Ghost from the Scripture. Oh! <gasps> Just like it is in 1 John chapter 4. Oh! <gasps> <laughs> yeah, let's continue now, okay? Let's continue now. Um, go to, and also too, also too, you got to remember something about the miracle, okay? But uh, Verse 39, But Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. You have to remember the magicians in Egypt, which you can read about in is Exodus chapter 7, verse 11 and verse 22. And Exodus chapter 8, verses 7, and most specifically, verse 18. See, Satan can do counterfeit miracles, okay? And he's going to deceive people by lying signs and wonders and false miracles and stuff like that during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? You got to remember that. Fatima, okay, which is nothing but devils. Okay, these kinds of uh, satanic wonders, okay? You have to remember that, okay? But it says, 
But Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name shall, that can lightly speak evil of me. you got to remember, Catholics worship flesh. God to them is a little cookie. They receive Jesus by eating him. And they have to do constantly, they have to do a lot of work uh, to stay saved. So they're constantly online doing, excuse me, they're constantly doing works. Constantly doing works. Always busy, having no rest, but always doing works, trying to trip up those of the church of the living God. <laughs> you chicken dung, cowardly little boy. Ed, only by your clever deception are you able to hide from people that you're a Catholic. And I feel sorry for those poor young men and those, uh, I don't know about if you've deceived any well, young women, but I, I feel sorry for them. But then again, if they choose to believe your nonsense, uh, it's on their head. But now go to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verses 15. <laughs> Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 on to verse 23. Now, wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. So speaking, speaking by the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God speaking through someone of the Church of the Living God is what? Because they're prophesying today Okay, it's not, and see the charismatics are like this. They, I got a word from the Lord for you today, and it's always contrary to Scripture. They never back it up with Scripture, okay? They have a new revelation from God. See the charismatics, the Pentecatholics are like this, okay? But no, someone who prophesies today is always about Scripture. That's how you prophesy. Speaking by the Spirit of God has all to do with Scripture, brethren. All has to do with Scripture. We'll, we'll prove that as we continue, okay? So, Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 on to verse 23, right away. And this again, Sermon on the Mount, instruction and righteousness there, genius, okay? Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves or ravening wolves. Uh-huh. Yeah, you sure are. Chicken dung coward. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Oh, the facade looks good. Oh, what's back here? Yeah. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Evil fruit. Constant bombardment. Constant going here, going there. No rest. <laughs> Your sleep is taken away unless you cause some to fall. Hmm. Hmm. Again. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Again, dispensational difference. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. And by their fruits, see, these devils can really paste on a really good facade. Do they, do they have anything to do with Scripture? Oh, yeah, you might quote, quote a verse or two, huh? Oh, good for you. Good for you. Did not Satan do the same to Jesus Christ? Hmm? Yeah. But see, these devils, they can't get in depth. They can't expound. They can't teach. They can twist, but they can't teach. Because why? That no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse. We'll get to a curse in a minute. Okay. Not everyone that saith, oh, back in Matthew chapter 17, uh, 7, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, 
Lord, interesting. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. Saying, Lord, Lord. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Dispensational difference. Instruction in righteousness we're looking at this for. Because it's evident today. But kingdom of heaven, the actual physical, literal kingdom in Jerusalem, where our Lord is going to be ruling and reigning from 4,000 years, the kingdom of heaven. Okay? But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. Hmm. Have we not prophesied in thy name? You're a Christian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in thy name have cast out devils? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And in thy name done many wonderful works. I said 25, didn't I? I meant 23. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Oh, you know Jesus. But does Jesus know you? As to a relationship, you don't even pray. And anything you pray, you pray to your father, the devil, that people, that the devil will kill the church of the living God. You could uh, do nothing against the church of the living God unless it was given to you from above. Yeah. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So what is being taught is that there are people out there who could say, Lord, Lord, who will profess with their mouth, but see, in their heart, there's no conversion. There's no new creature. There's nothing there. So they can profess it with their mouth, and it means nothing. Why? Because the Lord doesn't know them as to a relationship. Mm -hmm. So, wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Hmm. Very interesting. Now, let, no, 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 we're not done yet by a long shot. Go to Romans chapter 10. Hey, you easy believers and twit devils, huh? Here, this one's for you, okay? Uh, Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Again, you, you devils, you bank on the ignorance of Scripture in the people. And none of you really, you, you don't teach any scripture. You can't. You're inept. You can't. <laughs> okay? Romans chapter 10, verses. What well, ones? Come on, you easy believers and wicked devil heretic. Romans 10, verses 14 on to verse 17. Romans chapter 10. Verses 14 on verse 17. They never deal with uh, uh, Romans 10, 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Sh shut up, you wicked devils. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Speaking, hearing. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Mm. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear speak without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? That no man speaking by the Spirit of God, speaking by the Spirit of God, sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad th tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed. 
the gospel. Obey the gospel, meaning coming to him on his terms. They want to save themselves by their belief or think that there's something that they're good enough that God died for them or that they got to clean up X, Y, Z and then go to the Lord for repentance. Okay? But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. <laughs> and uh, go to 1 Corinthians now, chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. We want verses 18 on to verse 25. Okay? Speaking. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man who is speaking by the Spirit of God, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. And someone who is speaking by the Spirit of God is what? Speaking through the Scripture. Because what is the context in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you idiot? It's about those who have spiritual gifts who are of the church of the living God. You aren't of the church of the living God. You're not even a Christian. <laughs> yeah. 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 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 18 on to verse 25. I thank my God... I speak with tongues more than you than ye all. Remember, tongues is known languages. We're done, don't worry. Yet in the church, the body, not the building, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Brethren, be not children in understanding. Howbeit in malice be ye children. But in understanding be men. In understanding be men. It's simple. If it's against the scripture, it's evil. If it's against what God says, it's evil. Okay? What God says is right. What Satan and all his ministers say is wrong. It's very simple. Okay? All right. In the law it is written with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. And that's Isaiah chapter 28 verses 11 and 12. You can look that up for reference, okay? And yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. Verse 22. Wherefore tongues are for a sign. Because the Jews require a sign. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. Okay. Not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. So prophesying, speaking to them by the Holy Ghost that is in you, speaking to them, speaking to you by the Lord through the scripture. That's prophesying for today in this dispensation. So speaking by the Spirit of God. So, wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. Calleth Jesus accursed. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. See, what hinges this all together is who is speaking. And what is he speaking? By a spirit, by spiritual gifts, the Spirit of God. Okay? Also, those who are of the church of the living God because of verse 2, ye were Gentiles, talking that they are saved, see. So someone who is saved, speaking by the Spirit of God, cannot say that uh, Jesus is accursed. And someone who is speaking by the Spirit of God through the Scripture can, uh, um, through the Scripture, will say, as the one who can say, Jesus is the Lord. But see, the devils can say that. But see, the context is about those who are preaching just as it is with 1 John 
4, 1 through 6. You got some devil who's a preacher, a teacher, and they cannot confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. There you go. You got someone who's a preacher or a teacher who, uh, who cannot say Jesus is the Lord. There you go. It doesn't mean in a general sense for anybody who can utter Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. No, it has to do with those who are speaking by the Spirit of God, who are preaching, teaching, doing whatever by the Word of God. And last as I'm aware, a lot of these guys don't even use the scriptures. Oh, one or two verses here and there. Yeah, yeah, good for you, idiots. Okay, now uh, let's pick this up again where we were. Okay, where were we? We were in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 22, okay? Wherefore, tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying, this dispensation, prophesying, okay? Serveth not for them that believe not, because they are spiritually discerned, they don't have the spirit, but for them which believe. If therefore the whole church be come together into one place, note that church, one place, church is not a building. Don't you love that? Okay? And all speak with tongues. And there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers. Will they not say that you're mad? Because the tongues were a sign and the Jews require a sign. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if all prophesy and there come in one that believeth not or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judged of all. What does that mean? We know who our own is. They went out from us. They were not of us. See, someone who is not of the church of the living God, and we are prophesying, meaning speaking uh, the word to each other, exhorting each other, edifying each other, growing, being fed by the sincere milk of the word, and someone comes in who is not of us. Yeah, he is convinced of all. Hey, that guy's not saved. He is judged of all. Get out of here. See? And thus, are the secrets of his heart made manifest? Especially when you get uh, called out and fingered that you're lost. Oh, you... <laughs> mm -hmm. And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God and, and report that God is in you of a truth. Very much like Shimon the sorcerer did when he asked Peter to pray for him instead of him going to the Lord himself. It's like... Well, okay, these guys are saved. Well, I'm not. What do you do with that? Do you do like Shimon the Sorcerer? It's like, you pray to, uh, to the Lord for me. Or do you go to the Lord yourself? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Look at verse 22. Okay. We're going to have a little expository within an expository. <laughs> this, is the way, this is the way it works. But look at verse 22. Wherefore, tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. And what do these Pentecostal Catholic guys do? They come in with a blah, 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 and you, uh, the Church of the Living God, happen to come across that. It's like, oh, shut up. You're not saved. Quit doing that. It's like, you're an unbeliever. No, 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 no. Tongues are for a sign. Okay. And what does it say? And in 1 Corinthians, I believe, let's look at it. I, I believe it's verse 22, right? Uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, I think it's, yeah, verse 22. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Okay? Wherefore, tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. Hold your place here. <laughs> Go to Acts chapter 2. Oh, yeah. Come on. We're going to. Yeah. Come on. Come on. The sign gifts are gone because they were there for the Jews, people. Jews, scripturally, are equated onto the Hebrews, the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Don't forget that. 
Okay, you uh, come across these satanic Pentecatholics um, and these charismatics doing that stuff, rebuke them heavily, sharply. Okay, but Acts chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 13. And when the day of Pentecost, Pentecost 50, was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem. Now, here are the languages. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they, all, and they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Jews, born. Not every Jew is born in Jerusalem. Okay? Not every Jew was born in Israel. Okay? You got to remember, when Scripture talks about Jews, is always equated onto the following of the law. And who was the law given onto? The Hebrews, the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember that, okay? The languages, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Pergria and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya around about, excuse me, Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Now, tongues, languages, known languages, the satanic, blah, 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 that is not scriptural tongues. You run into someone doing that, they are doing that by a devil, okay? By a devil not by the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. God forbid, okay? The tongues, and notice in verse 5 it said Jews, okay? Why? Because the Jews require a sign. But it says here in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 14, verse 22, to them that believe not. Verse 12 in Acts chapter 2. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking. So wait a minute. Not all who heard the tongues believed? You don't say. And remember too, the giving of the Holy Ghost. Okay? Remember that. Others mocking said, These are men, these men are full of new wine. So now when you go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 22, Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. And there were some that were mocking, saying they were full of new wine, for a sign for them that believe not. Believe not that that was from the Holy Ghost. See? But there's another aspect here. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. And why is that? Well, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, okay, verses 14 on to verse 16. Those who are saved, born again, and converted of the church and living God. But the natural man, one who is not saved, not regenerate, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. 
but he that is spiritual judgeth all things. And note the lowercase s there. Oh, you mean like now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren? Hmm, okay. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? That, for who hath known the mind of the Lord? That he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. Okay? And look at verse 13. Which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual with things with spiritual. Let's read verses 12 and 13. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Note the lowercase s's. Given to us. Verse 1 in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Okay? Are you with me so far? Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth. Oh, like the trivia? Oh, uh, yeah. But which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. And then it says here in verse 22 in 1 Corinthians 14. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. Got it? We had to touch it at least once in this video. 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4 verses 1 on to verse 6. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Why? Continuing the sentence. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. See, prophets, false prophets. We get into this in the first John video, which will be linked in the description box. Not going to get heavily into this, but... What is a prophet for today in this dispensation? Someone who speaks by the Spirit of God from the Scriptures. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Okay? These people who are, especially the chicken dung cowardly little boy, doesn't teach anything from Scripture. So he's not prophesying to you as the church of the living God because he's lost and not saved. But yet he can utter, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. Just like a tragic young man's father was able to say, Jesus is the Lord as well. See, what he's talking about is those who are have the spiritual gifts, who have the Lord within them, who are teaching, expounding, edifying through the scriptures. Okay? Let's continue. Hereby know ye the capital S Spirit of God, every lowercase s spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And in context, it is talking about what? Prophets. Those who are prophesying. We prophesy, like I told you, Spirit of God in me speaking to you, through the scriptures, that is prophesying today, okay? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? <laughs> and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Again, this has to do with those who are preaching and teaching through the word, just like what he is talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And you've got these chicken dung cowards, these de deceptive devils, 
infiltrators sent to just cause division, to cause strife, to get people uh, to err in the faith. Who can say it? But see, they're not of the church of the living God. They're not teaching you anything from scripture. They're not using the word because they're inept. Incapable. Verse 4. Ye are of God's little children and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit, okay? Then he that is in the world, they are of the world. <laughs> Therefore, speak they of the world. And look what they're talking about. It's all worldly things. Not getting into any scripture, are you good there, guys, huh? Yeah. And the world heareth them. Why not? Because they know their own, right? We are of God. He that knoweth God, personal relationship, heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Even though they hear. They hear what there is, but it doesn't go into their heart. Okay? Why? Because they're not saved. They're spiritually discerned. Okay? We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth, lowercase s, and the spirit of error. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Hmm. Hmm. Very interesting. Now go to Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4. Verses 1 on to verse 6. Not 3, Brad. Okay. Colossians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 6. Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. Continue in prayer, and watch in the same with thanksgiving, with all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance, to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. But yet devils can say it. But see, the context is for those who are speaking by the Spirit of God, preaching, teaching, uh, 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 with all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance, speak, to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bond. Hey, hey, you chicken dung coward. Tell us how to get saved. Make a salvation video. Huh? Just believe. Huh? Come on. Come on, do it. Expound to us some deep scripture. Because, you know, you've been a Christian for so long. Right? Same, same with any of you. Go ahead. Give us some real strong meat. Come on. Yeah. No, all you can do is make attack videos. <laughs> and make bogus claims. <laughs> That's all you can do. That's all you can do. And talk about worldly things. <laughs> okay? Let's read that again. We're with all praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom, the fear of the Lord, toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Seasoned with salt. Salt burns, but it also preserves. And grace, giving favor. Okay? 
And Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Verses 9 on to verse 11. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the capital S spirit. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. So see, where it says here, Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. Okay? Someone who is one, saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, speaking, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Okay? Speaking by the word of God. Okay? Having a spiritual gift. It's talking about those who are expounding, teaching, preaching, Going through the scriptures. That's the context. That's what it's talking about. Because it does not mean that someone in a general sense can say, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. And then actually live as a devil and lots of evidence showing that he is one. Or you are one. But you're a little afraid of that, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not talking about any general sense. But what about a cursed? What does a cursed mean? A cursed, okay? And, and here it is. Here it is, okay? Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. And we've already seen that it has to do with those who are speaking the word of God, okay? Which these devils don't, okay? So, what does a curse mean? One of you, go ahead, I, I, I wrote it down. It's not exact, but I wrote it down and we're going to look at the first mention of a curse. Very interesting, okay? But we're going to look at the first mention, but here, uh, one of you put the Webster's definition, and again, I'll pin it, okay? More than once is good, <laughs> okay? Accursed, doomed to destruction, misery, separated from the faithful, excommunicated, and separated. Uh, Romans chapter 9, verse 3. Paul talking. Let's read verses 1 on to verse 3. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, for I could wish that myself were accursed from, from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. Accursed, separated. What does that say there? I realize, separated from the faithful. When Jesus was on the cross, was he separated from God? No, because he is God. Hmm. Okay. Worthy of the curse. As far as, you know, keeping the accursed thing. Like in the book of Joshua, when they cover, when the one guy, uh, Akan, the son of Karma. I, what was that? Uh, go to Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6. You look up the word accursed, a lot of it appears in the book of Joshua. But Joshua chapter 6, verse 18, okay? Where it's the admonition. Uh, Joshua chapter 6, verse 18. And ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed. When ye take of the accursed thing and make the cup camp of Israel a curse and, a, and trouble it. And then Akan, I think it was the son of Carmi or whatever, took of the accursed thing and hid it in his tent and brought a, a curse upon Israel. Okay? Okay. Keeping of the accursed thing. But 
worthy of the curse. Was Jesus Christ worthy of the curse of being on the tree? No man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. He never sinned. But see, you got to remember what the cross was. Okay? Hold on, hold on. Hence, if someone is worthy of the curse, hence, wicked, malignant in the extreme, just as this guy, oh, what was it? Akan, there it is. Yes. Akan, the son of Carmi. He was wicked, malignant in the extreme. Because he kept of the accursed thing. Okay? Worthy of the curse. Was Jesus Christ worthy of the curse of being on a cross? No man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. You want to know another way someone can say that Jesus is accursed? That Jesus had to go to hell and pay for our sins in hell. That's what Steve Anderson and the new IFB guys teach, that Jesus paid for our sins in hell, calling Jesus accursed. Saying that Jesus sinned, calling Jesus accursed. Okay, now let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 21. Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 23, one verse. Uh, let's uh, 22 and 23. Now, this is this is important. Was G Deuteronomy chapter 21 verses 22 and 23. And if a man have committed a sin worthy of death, did Jesus Christ commit a sin worthy of death? Absolutely not. Okay, prove that in the skin suit video that. No, Jesus never sinned. God cannot sin. Okay, it's impossible. Okay, God could not sin. So, and if any man have committed a sin worthy of death, and he be to, and he be to be put to death, and thou hang him on a tree, his body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. For he that is hanged is accursed of God. That the land be not defiled, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. Well, Jesus was on the cross, yes. But note what it says, his body shall not remain all night upon the tree. If someone were to remain all night upon the tree, that would be the accursed. And also verse 22 if a man have committed a sin worthy of death, Jesus Christ was not committed no sin. And he did not remain on the cross all night, did he? But to say that Jesus went to hell to pay for our sins, calling him accursed. Saying that Jesus sinned, calling him accursed. Mm. Saying that flesh is God and that God is flesh, Calling Jesus accursed? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, 2 Corinthians, excuse me. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, okay? Again, let's put this to rest. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Jesus knew no sin, but yet he went to the cross and suffered crucifixion as if he were a criminal. But he didn't stay up there all night. No, it took him down the same day. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Now, 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 21 on to verse 25. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, 
leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. righteously. Who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree. And hence, that's why sin has been relegated to the flesh, okay? That we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Hmm. And also Hebrews chapter 10. Now here's, here's where the Catholic really, really, really gets nailed on this. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 11 on to verse 14. See, a Catholic... An ugly one at that. A Catholic worships flesh because their God is the little, perfectly round, sun-shaped bale cookie. And they have to take their bale cookie to receive Christ, okay? So hence, to the Catholic, it's all about flesh. To these devils, it's all about flesh. They, got, they get offended when you call the flesh that is sinful a skin suit. Because why? They're Catholics and they worship flesh. And the Mass is an integral part onto so-called Catholic salvation. Because if you don't take Mass, you don't receive Jesus. They teach that in the Catechism. And what is the Mass? A continual sacrifice. So when our Lord, so when our Lord said it is finished, it was finished. And we're going to look at this, but I just want to say this. So when you got some wicked Catholic, some chicken dung, cowardly little boy Catholic, um, saying that, you know, getting offended because you point out through the scripture that all flesh is sinful, even the flesh that our Lord Jesus Christ was manifest in, you know, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God is not flesh. Flesh is not God. God was manifest in the flesh. Okay? But see, the Catholic has to continually go to Mass. Don't you? Don't you? And on that, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 11 on to verse 14. And every priest standeth daily ministering priest. There is no priest today. Oh, sure, there's Jesuit priests, but there's no God-ordained priests today. There's only one priest, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, okay? And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. So when the Catholic is continually sacrificing their little bale cookie God, on their little altar and drinking their wine with the transubstantiation, hocus pocus stuff. <laughs> that sacrifice can never take away sins. Why? Because it's not God, obviously. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. So, when the Catholic continually offer, uh, eats their, you know, little bale cookie, um, calling Jesus accursed, worthy of the curse, <laughs> who who's really who's really a blasphemous devil so and also too and here's another thing let's let's put the nail in the coffin here go to psalm 50 psalm 50 because psalms don't have chapters psalm 50 
Psalm 50, verses 21 on to verse 22. And on to the Catholic, because remember, Catholics worship flesh. God is flesh. Flesh is God to them. When you say it yourself, you idiot, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Is come. It's not that the flesh is God, you idiot. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. Now consider this, ye, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. But then again, a lot with these people, they've gone past that point of no return. And they're living it up by the power of Satan, their father. So, again, looking back, looking now at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God. Okay, speaking by the Spirit of God. Speaking by the Spirit of God. Scripture. Okay. Calleth Jesus a curse. And no man who is speaking by the Spirit of God, okay, and no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. So again, as in with 1 John chapter 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, in context, is talking about the leaders, if you will. Bad choice of words, excuse me. But those who are put there to preach, to teach, that kind of stuff. Those who are living as an example. Verse 4. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same capital S spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but this, it is the same God which worketh all in all. But see, about verse 3, speaking. Note the speaking. Sp this, the mouth speaking, okay? Speaking. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. We've already proved this, okay? But the manifestation of the, capital S, Spirit, is given to every man to profit with all. Look at this. Look at how this starts, okay? For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. And he said unto the man, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Look at this. For to one is given by the Spirit the word. Word of wisdom, speaking about the fear of the Lord, okay? To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. Verse 3 is talking about those who are speaking the word. That's what verse 3 is talking about. Not that anyone in a general sense can utter it, proving they are saved. No, again, it is about, this is talking about those who are speaking the word, whether it be the word of wisdom or the word of knowledge. Where do you get wisdom? Where do you get knowledge? To another, now here's where it differs. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. Okay, um, Faith, another faith by the same spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. Someone who works with medicines and that kind of stuff. To another, and you also got to remember too, that the Corinthian church was messing up because he started off with the Jews require a sign and these guys were getting involved in the babbling. Blah, 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 blah. It was actually a basic beginning form of what we call the modern charismatic pentecatholic heresy okay basically 
to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy. And prophecy involves what? Words. Prophecy involves what? Speaking. To another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits. Look look at the lowercase s there, right? Huh? Look at the lowercase s. Huh? Is that in your set of scriptures? Huh? Lowercase s there. Discerning of spirits. Yes. To another, diverse kinds of tongues, languages, which we already looked at. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and self-same capital S spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Again, verse 3 is talking about those who are speaking the word. Whether it, whether it is the word of wisdom or knowledge or prophecy. Prophecy involves speaking, word, reading. Okay, reading. Today in this dispensation, see... The Corinthians, they thought the blah, 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 they thought that was actual tongues. No. They were also, the Corinthian church was exhibiting an early form of what is today the Pentecatholic, care Catholic heresy. Okay? But looking at verse 10, prophecy. Prophecy. Now, this is covered in the 1 John 4 video. But we're going to cover it here today a little bit, a little bit today. Go to 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 16, on to verse 21. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables, just believe, God loves everybody. Uh, you got to clean up your life first before the Lord saves you. That Ray Comfort guy, he is a true Lordship Salvationist. Please stay away from him. And Paul Washer, avoid them like dung on the bottom of your shoe. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. <laughs> we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture, not of your imagination, not of some devil spirit that is in you, but no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, or by the will of man, excuse me, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So, and remember, in the Old Testament, okay, the canon of Scripture was not complete. And God was revealing what things would come to pass in the Old Testament by the Old Testament prophets. Today, we have the whole sandwich. We have the complete sandwich. The entirety, the full canon of Scripture. Okay? We do. Yes, we do. So today, again, we have the Church of the Living God. Prophecy today in this dispensation. There is no extra revealed things outside of Scripture. We speak to you, we are prophesying to you, because what? Because of the Spirit of God that lives within us, speaking to you through the Scripture, that's prophecy today. That's prophesying today. Okay? 
Do you, you understand? Please, I hope you do. Now, we got to remember something though. Isaiah chapter 29. We're going to be going to the Old Testament for this. Isaiah chapter 29. See, these devils can utter these things with their lips. And the context to saying Jesus is the Lord and Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, the context is always to do with those who are speaking the word of God. And these devils here, they're not speaking the word of God, are they? At the most, they'll use one or two, maybe three or four or five verses. Wow. But look at what they do. Look what they do. They're not teaching you anything in Scripture. They're not. You go ahead and say that all day and all night till you're purple in the face, smoking on your cigarettes and drinking your booze, they're a tough guy. But see, the Lord knows. The Lord knows. You're not going to be able to hide from the Lord. It couldn't come soon enough for you. Uh, Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men, i.e. Catholics. That was Isaiah 29, verse 13. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 31. And they come unto thee as my people. Ah, you know what? Let's read, let's read 30 on to verse 33. Also thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses, and speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh from the Lord, that cometh forth from the Lord. Excuse me. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they shew much love, yeah, you sure do. But their heart goeth after their covetousness. And lo, thou art unto them a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. And of course, Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. Verses 7 and 9. 7 on to 9, excuse me. 7 on to 9. Matthew, not 13, beg your pardon, brethren. <laughs> Matthew chapter 15, verses 7 on to verse 9. Ye hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, and we just read this, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips. Lord, Lord! Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. Yeah. But their heart is far from me. Remember, God knows your heart. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. The commandments of men, Catholics. Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Verses 43 under verse 45. Again. Luke chapter 6, verses 43, on to verse 45. 
For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, okay, now there are diversity of spirits, or diversity of spirits, excuse me, diversities of things. But there is diversity of spirits, aren't there? <laughs> spirit of man, spirit of devil, the spirit of this world, spirit of antichrist. God is a spirit. But there are diversities of ministrations, okay? So, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 27 on to verse 31. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets. Now the apostles went forth doing what? Preaching. Okay? Secondarily prophets. Again, prophesying, speaking. Thirdly, teachers. Again, teachers also using words. But also you can teach by example, but with what we've already looked at, teaching through words. After that, miracles. No man can do a miracle lightly in my name and speak evil of me. Then the gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet shew I unto you a more perfect way. And let's finish it with this. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1. Follow after charity, which is self-sacrifice. And desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. First, uh, let's read on to verse 3. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, and that's not the gibberish, unknown, meaning that you don't know. Like if I'm sitting here and the Lord's like, Brad, I want you to speak in Swahili or something. Okay? It's a known language. But what is it unknown? Unknown to the person. Okay? For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. But he that prophesieth, speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. Refute this, hot shot. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Brad, your attitude is, uh, you know what? You know what? These devils who hate us, who hate our Lord, they are our enemies. Especially those who are never going to get saved because they have made their choice to serve Satan. They are gone. They are good as gone to hell. Just haven't happened yet. Okay? These are our enemies. We are not to, I mean, we're telling the truth. So hence, we're showing them love, but they are our enemies. Don't forget that. And as we have shown and as we have proven, the verbally stating in a general sense, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh and that Jesus is the Lord, saying that generally is no proof of anyone being saved. The context to where those are spoken of 
all have to do with those who are speaking the word of God and are prophesying, which today in this dispensation comes from speaking the word of God. Okay, that's what that's there for. It's not a proof test to prove that anyone is saved. And you babes out there, I, the fact that people still preach this or still are harping on this, well, that's all they got. They don't got a leg to stand on. So beware of this. Beware of this. And it's very neat in this time with all this distraction going on for these devils to come in and lead many away and get them to stray from the faith or to give them a false sense of security, thinking that they're saved and they're not. And, you know, like I said, um, there are those out there who adhere to this, and you're going to hell. You're going to hell. And you have gone past the point where you cannot get saved. You think you're going to repent and get saved on your deathbed? Good luck, buddy. Just like your one buddy uh, Constantine did, right? Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Up the up the smoke in there, buddy. Go ahead, go ahead. And also add another 10 or 12 pints to deceive yourself. It's leading a lot of you astray. Thankfully, not a lot. Thankfully, not a lot. But be careful of these people, brethren. Like I said, I used to preach and teach that if someone could say that, that would prove they were saved. I was wrong, and the, the videos will be in the description box. I was wrong. I was wrong. And those videos are there for you to see. It can be fixed. Blow it out your nose. <laughs> it's going to be it for this video, brethren. Like I said, um... Hopefully, Lord willing, um, got to address this, this satanic United Nations stuff. You know, the, a lot of things happening right now. And so convenient, um, men have brought up arguments that we shouldn't be wasting our time on. But it's meat because this is, you know, Halloween is too obvious. Christ Mass and Astarte, oh, there you go, there you go. So that's going to be it for this video. Um, I was brutal in this uh, view, uh, video the way I was because um, number one, this this devil needs to go away. But number two, you youths out there who are being targeted. Don't fall for this. Please. 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 Search the scriptures daily whether these things be so, okay? So, thank you, Church of the Living God, our brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for your prayers. Thank you so much for your help. Thank you to all of you of the Church of the Living God whom we love, we know, and who we do not know. Thank you. Thank you. Pray for one another. Pray for the babes that are getting led away by devils. And pray for God's mercy because who knows who he may save today. So, we love you. And thank you so very much. And we will see you in the next video. Got some things going on this weekend. So uncharacteristically... There might not come, today is December the 9th, which is a Thursday. There might not come a video until Monday. We'll leave that open. We'll see. That, that's not up to me. That's up to the Lord. Because this is, this is the Lord's, not mine. Okay? So. Goodbye, brethren, sisters. We love you. See you in the next video.